Ghost of Trades here, and this is my November trading recap. Now, as always, if you haven't watched any of my previous recaps before, these are normally a bit more ranty. Um, they're just kind of off the cuff. I'm just kind of talking about my experience through uh, the trading month of November. This month was a roller coaster. I did a tweet yesterday um, about you know, about some parts of it of almost trying to get a first five figure uh, month and then <laughs> taking a lot of losses. Um, but we'll go into it. We'll go through every single part. I'll go over my stats. Uh, what I'm showing you here is my trading uh, trader sync calendar. Um, so you get to see all the profits each day and everything. And this is what I like to do uh, when I'm posting trades on Twitter. I just put it in R. I think that's kind of what matters most. And then through the obviously the monthly recap, uh, I've kind of grown to just show my p &L as well as I'm getting better as a trader. Now, this is the equity curve. Uh, I decided to go with bars this time on TradeSync just because I think it, it kind of expressed the volatility of this month a bit better than just the single line. Um, overall, the month started off quite slow, really compounded some um, kind of profits uh, towards the end of the month and then lost a decent chunk and then recovered quite a lot with this uh, last day of November 30th on uh, MI and M. But we'll get into this. So for stats wise, um, pretty good win percentage to be honest. Uh, I think really, at least the impression I got off Twitter was everyone was having a really tough week uh, this week. Uh, but kind of before this, this month overall wasn't terribly um, bad, at least for me personally. Now, I think there was a lot of traps at end of days. Um, there was actually a decent amount of halts, kind of like um, just straight off kind of the open. Um, some of those caught me out as well, uh, mainly BDRX. Uh, but overall, win rate pretty solid, 75%. That's definitely higher than my median average anyway. Um, and especially based on my back tests, that's uh, decently high. Normally, I'm, I'm ranging between 65 and like 70-ish. For my total amount of winners, I had 12 winners and I had four losses. I had six consecutive consecutive winners, uh, which was great. <laughs> like that was just an amazing feeling for the month. And then I had two consecutive losses, which to be honest is very easy to handle. My biggest profit was $2,818. And my biggest loss was about $800 uh, if you kind of round it up with locates and stuff. My profit to loss ratio was 1.7. Um, to be honest, I'm kind of surprised that it wasn't um, higher. But overall, 1.7, I'm still fine with it. Um, I never expect a huge profit to loss ratio just because I know I'm kind of more playing win rate rather than like huge uh, winners. However, I think overall this month was um, decently good stats wise at least. Now for the largest loss, it was a slippage trade on BDRX. These are, you know, these are the trades I hate the most. Um, I hate, you know, getting in pretty much right at open. Uh, it was pretty standard execution. I think I did good on the entry point. Uh, and then, you know, it showed me a bit of um, profits. I don't really care about that. I, I don't really try and focus on the first. Well, I, I really don't try and think about profits at all until the last like 20 minutes of the trading day, really. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll definitely have looks of the chart around... Uh, 11 to like uh, 1 p.m. New York time to see if there's any kind of like um, reclaims of view up or anything like that. And sometimes I'll move my stop down as well. Um, but these are these are the worst where you just enter and then like, you know, next 10 minutes you, you're getting slipped out of a trade. I think I lost about 1.3 R on this. This was about $800 in total uh, with locates. Uh, maybe eight, maybe 810. I think it was roughly around there. Um, and yeah, felt terrible. But overall, the reaction to it was really good. I'm happy with how I played it. I didn't um, you know, go trade another uh, ticker or anything like that. The the moments I try and think of when, you know, having these kind of losses is remembering how badly I performed, um, you know, even two years ago. Like, it really isn't that long. Um, two years ago, if I had taken this loss, realistically, I would have found another ticker that was kind of hot of the day, tried to make that back at profits. I probably would have oversized on that trade. Um, I wouldn't have executed it very well because I'm trading emotionally. Um, and, you know, nowadays what I try and do is I, I take that loss. Um, I go upstairs and I, I try and either read uh, like a book that I'm interested in, uh, normally it's trading kind of focused, I work on a different project, I do some coding, um, realistically I just try and get my mind off it as much as possible. Uh, normally my routine as well is like I'll, I'll go grab myself some um, lunch or something because it's uh, in the UK anyway, uh, around open is 2.30pm, uh, so I normally don't eat right before I trade or anything like that, so if I do take a loss early in the morning I get out of the house, go gra grab some lunch from... Um, uh, like a local store like Tesco's or something. Um, I'm just trying to get my mind over. There's not much really you can say to this. I'm not terribly disappointed in myself with the slippage. Um, realistically, it could have been a lot worse. I, I, I pretty much was getting clicking the get out button the second it reopened. Um, I think if I was maybe a bit more cautious, I could have got out earlier. But 
normally I, I try and get out before whole bands, but this one was just quick. Um, okay. I, personally, I didn't submit any orders before it holded, so I can't really say that I didn't get filled or something like that. Um, so I definitely could have been quicker. That's probably a, a part of improvement I could do on this uh, particular loss. But apart from that, realistically, I think I traded it well. I reacted it well. Um, and it just comes with the game. You're going to get slippage on some of these trades, and, and that's why it's important to know when you're trading small caps, it's volatile, and you're going to get some slippage sometimes. Next is the largest winner, and I think this is just an perfect example of why end of day exits are normally best now is this a cherry picked example 100 percent. but this happens a lot of the times over the years of trading small caps where you will get one of these you know enter in and open and it will fade it will just completely demolish this one's like 180 to like almost like 90 cents or something um it was just insane it wasn't my biggest winners it was about 200 uh, no sorry two thousand eight hundred dollars and i think off the location it was probably like two thousand uh, 700 and like 80 760 something like that uh, look it's went too expensive for this one even though it was um really low price I, I got them early in the morning so it wasn't too bad um overall this one the kind of point i was going to say was yeah end of day exits are amazing because they maximize when you are right and that is what you want normally in a strategy now obviously I, you guys know that I, i'm not going to be um a person to tell you for certain end of day exits is best for every single strategy no it's not some strategies work better with you know percentages atrs there's tons of different ways to take profits but at least in small caps uh, and you know the particular way i can trade for day one yappers you want to maximize when you're right and maximizing um the amount of fade or capture you can get is really the best way to do that um now i don't want to try and trade a high off strategy i find those uh, harder to stick to so yes my win rate is normally like 65 to 70 percent and normally my average r uh is like 1.6 1.7 you know well, we're getting close to two but it's definitely not uh every single trade and there are a decent amount of trades where it's just one r um but when you get ones like this you maximize those uh those winners a lot and if you're trying to do you know percentage such as you know i'm going to exit uh after 10 percent you're not maximizing your winners you're just taking a lot of small winners um and realistically you're never going to get those you know exponentially bigger winners on these kind of days where they are um you know you they they appear and you can capture them um i will once say uh, say one thing like a key thing for me for risk management wise is i don't stick into an end of date winner if it starts to reclaim or show me that that kind of edge is decayed now there's multiple ways to go about that uh, at least for me in small caps that's that's mainly reclaiming something so like reclaiming vwap increasing volume coming into end of day i know the odds are worse that it's going to close red so realistically you know just cut the trade for either uh slightly less than one hour if i can get out in profit that's great if not but primarily i give it a bit of wiggle room um but i'm, I'm getting out if it's starting crossing view up after like 1 p.m um and that's something I, I see a lot of people miss sometimes um and i think it can be a small thing that some, sometimes can really help obviously backtest it for yourself see if it's you know good for your system um but at least for me that's a that's a big part of it next is my notes so realistically it's kind of this the same topic here where this month really showed to me why I only trade one uh, one gap per day. Um, I have way less drawdown, but I have way less profit. Now, obviously, uh, I'm not going to take away that you know almost five figures in profit is, is great. I'm in incredibly blessed, and I couldn't have imagined this uh, two years ago when I when I was losing or almost blowing up my accounts. Um, but you know, still to say this, uh, there are traders that probably trade similar size to me and make way more because they are trading way more tickers um and I, i'm aware of that but i know that you know after a month like this i can fully appreciate why i've chosen the style um this month was not nearly as challenging as it was um sometimes for other traders i've talked to now that that is no sh you know shade to them at all um if i was in their position i would find it challenging i'm not saying i'm better in, in any way um i'm technically less profitable um as a trader compared to them they make way more money than me so it's, it's nothing about this it's more that for my personality and for how i've handled drawdowns previously i know i'm very weak on them maybe in five years i'm going to be you know amazing at handling them after so many times of experiencing them and i'm going to be able to be one of those traders that can be trading five tickers every day on, on full size um just at the moment for me I try and pick my highest probability kind of like trade uh the way i kind of gauge that i've gone over in different videos but the the general thing of it is i'm looking for like the biggest gap on the day and that normally means statistic wise that is going to be uh either the highest close rate or the biggest fader most of the time um depends with nuances here and there but that's pretty much the general idea of it um but yeah this 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 month really showed to me you know why um 
I, I do that and why I, I back tested that and why I accept to, to trade that way. Um, is it more boring? 100%. I'm only taking one trade a day. It's definitely not as, uh, as good. And there's also a whole other, you know, discussion there that technically if I'm only trading one gap per day, then there is a less um, probability that I will be green on the day, um, which means, you know, just kind of you exponentially put that out and that makes some changes here and there. But I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, for me at the moment, it's working. I think in the future, I'll, I'll probably sway to that way of trying to take more trades. So I have a higher probability of being green on the day uh, as I just have higher odds and have more bets taking place. So I have an overall higher probability. Um, second one, yeah, tough tough month for many. So I definitely feel you guys if, if it's been a tough month. Um, I think the beginning of November really wasn't too bad for small cap traders. I think it was just really the, the last kind of week that's been really tough. Happy to still be green, as I was kind of mentioning. Just overall incredibly grateful to be green at all in this kind of market environment and i think um realistically as it changes maybe i i will be have a red month next month i i can't say that for certain but um we'll see i think realistically if i'm trading only one gap per day i'd be surprised if i'm uh red for the month um it's been at least in my back test very low probability that i'm red for a whole month at least and also very low probability i'm red for consecutive months so realistically i'm not too too worried uh, this was a great month to kind of test my trading character. I was really happy and surprised to see that I didn't break any rules. Um, the slippage one definitely hurt. I, I won't lie, like I was on that day quite um, annoyed and, you know, slightly depressed is, I guess, an over-exaggerated word on it, but I was definitely sad uh, on that day for 100%. Um, losing almost a grind in a day was not fun at all. Um, but it, it was good. I, I'm happy I went through the month. I, I can kind of look back on it now and be like, okay, look, there's more evidence that I can stick to my strategy. There's more evidence that I can get through those times. So in the future, it's only going to get easier as I build up more evidence for myself. Uh, and, you know, even after two years, you still have to build up <laughs> more evidence. So I, I'm glad about that. And I, I kind of take that um, as a good perspective for this month. And lastly, kind of recapping this again is that this month showed to me why I pick my approach to small caps of how I do it. It shows to me why I trade only one gap per day. It shows me why I say uh, size in a particular way. It shows me why that I kind of um, treat trades a bit differently based on gap percentage and statistics. Um, and that was very reassuring. Some months, um, believe me, some months I'll see other traders and they'll be killing it. They'll, you know, 50k months, 60k months. Uh, and I'm here with my 5k month, um, you know, not going into draw now, not technically losing, but you get a bit of FOMO sometimes. It, it feels like maybe I'm not doing the best thing. Like maybe I should be trying to do exponential growth uh, for my trading. And obviously, you know, this all comes as a as a thing that it could be recency bias. You know, obviously this month is good for me and not good uh, for, you know, uh, many others. Um, and other months is going to be the other way around. So I'm totally aware of that. And just, I think at least for now, I'm very confident in my approach of that. I'm going for less drawdown and less profit. Uh, and I'm fine with that. In the future, I think you'll see me change and I'll go defo for more exponential growth. Um, but while I kind of build up uh, my kind of overall trading approach, I, I think I, I've pretty much got it built up, but I'm, I'm just trying to make sure I've got it solidified and I can show consistency um, for at least maybe another two years or, or at least a year and I'll start kind of moving away. But I still hope everyone's small caps trading month was good. I hope you ended uh, green or if it was a red month, then I hope you executed well. Um, Defo has been challenging, um, and I could definitely see why if I was trading multiple tickets, it would be tough. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, please like and share with anyone else who might be interested, and I really hope your month went well.